Hello again, I'm reading from my book, Father of Faith, In the Footsteps of Abraham, and we're up to step nine. Isaac is born. Genesis 21 verse 1 says this, The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. Sarah said, God has made me laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. She said, Who would have said unto Abraham, that Sarah should have given children suck, for I have borne him a son in his old age. After only three months of God speaking a personal word to Sarah, the Lord visited her and she conceived. Then nine months later, she was holding her precious baby in her arms. Wow, can you believe it? Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah 90. And God had at last given them the child that they had waited 25 years for. Yes, if God speaks, God can be trusted to fulfill his promises. Nothing will hinder God from fulfilling his promises except our unbelief. At each stage, Abraham and Sarah were tested to see if they still believed what God had said before he allowed them onto the next stepping stone. God's promises are not automatic. They are always conditional. What they had hoped for had now become tangible. It was the evidence of, at last, their faith. Both children were in reality Sarah's. Ishmael was born of a surrogate mother, but he was the child of the flesh, from her heart and head, conceived before Abraham was circumcised. Isaac, however, was born miraculously of her own flesh and was the child of promise from her own womb, conceived after Abraham was circumcised. This meant that Isaac was from circumcised seed. Abraham circumcised himself because he believed what God said and was making a covenant with him. He was underscoring his faith. Isaac was born of faith, not only the faith of Abraham, but also the faith of Sarah. Hebrews 11 verse 11 says this, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. God certainly had a high regard for Sarah. For throughout the story of Abraham, Sarah is identified with him until the time of her death. In the allegory of Galatians, Sarah is the type of the Jerusalem which is above Galatians 4.22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by a promise. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which genders to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answers to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, you barren that bears not, break forth and cry, you that travails not. For the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. It was always God's intention that we were circumcised, not only in our flesh, but also in our hearts. 
Deuteronomy 10, 16 says this, Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Jeremiah 4, verse 4, Circumcise yourselves before the Lord, and take away the foreskin of your heart, you men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire, and burn that none can quench, because of the evil of your doings. It's important to note that unless we have been circumcised, it is impossible to receive what God has promised. In the Old Testament, it was relatively simple in the fact that they could do something physical. But for us, we need to cut away all fleshly things that would hinder us from fulfilling God's purposes. When God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh to let his people go, he threatened to kill Moses because he hadn't circumcised his children. There was no way that God was allowing uncircumcised flesh to represent him. Moses had to go God's way, or not at all. In Exodus 4.20 we read this, And Moses took his wife and his sons, and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand, and it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son, and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband art thou to me. God had originally sent Moses with his wife and sons, but because Zipporah was disgusted at the practice of circumcision and called Moses a bloody husband, God would not permit her to go with him. She was a woman and certainly could not be circumcised in the flesh like a male, but there was such a reluctance and aggression in her which made it obvious that she certainly was not prepared to be circumcised in her heart either. God will not permit unyielded hearts to represent him. God is not impressed by our fits of temper. Either we change or his plan changes. There are many footballs waiting to be used. Don't ever think we can hold God to ransom. During the 40 years that the children of Israel wandered the wilderness, nobody had thought to continue the practice of circumcision. But before God allowed them to go into the promised land and capture Jericho, he made all the males circumcise themselves. There was no other way to go in. Everyone had to comply. Joshua 5 verse 2 says this, At that time the Lord said unto Joshua, Make these sharp knives and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. And Joshua made him sharp knives and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. And this is the cause why Joshua did circumcise. All the people that came out of Egypt that were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way, after they came out of Egypt. Now all the people that came out were circumcised, but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way, as they came forth out of Egypt, then they had not circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, till all the people that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord, unto whom the Lord sware that he would not show them the land, which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us, a land that flows with milk and honey. And their children, whom he raised up in their stead, them Joshua circumcised for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. And it came to pass, when they had done circumcising all the people, that they abode in their places in the camp till they were whole. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Therefore the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. Isaac was the first of a new breed. When he was just eight days old, Abraham circumcised him. For seven days he lived in the flesh, but then on the eighth day, the beginning of a new era in spiritual terms, he became a new creature. Genesis 21 verse 4 And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac being eight days old, as God had commanded him. <laughs>